All right, today I thought I would do Benmore Gardens. I was trying to wait for a really nice day to do this, but uh, the way the weather's been the last few months, I could be waiting for a while. So before we do anything, I'm going to try and get something to eat at the cafe, Redwood Cafe, get my lunch. Uh, and also this is where the office is, here. Okay, uh, so I'll have some lunch here. And then I'll uh, show you the various points of interest in the gardens. Okay, that's lunch over. Very, very nice as well. Black and blue burger, red, uh, black coffee and chips. Um, that place is not having a lot of luck because they've usually got like a canvas marquee there to keep everybody dry when it rains. But apparently during strong, <coughs> uh, the weekend storms, it is now gone. So they're going to have to get a new marquee. But anyway, basically we're in the car park here. Um, and normally there's a, a footbridge that goes across there to get you into the park but that footbridge was also damaged in a storm uh, in October or November so we're going to be going that way so you've got the Sequoia Boulevard here I'll show you that we're going to go up around there by Benmore House we're going to walk along here uh, go up the hill to the Bhutanese Pavilion then back up the hill up to there, which is a Chilean viewpoint refuge, down the hill to here, which is the Chilean shelter with the condor. Uh, then, what we'll do is we'll head back uh, down here <clears throat> and we'll go to the fernery, which hopefully will still be open by the time I get to it because I've left it quite late in the day to do this. Um, and then we'll head down basically and go through. Where is it? Yeah, down here. We'll go to Puck's Hut, down here. Uh, and then the wee, the wee pond uh, and the fountain that doesn't work anymore. Okay, um, so that's kind of the main points. I won't begin up to the Wright Memorial viewpoint this time round. I don't think. I'll see how the time is. Maybe towards the end of the video I may go up there. But that's what we plan to do today. Okay, this this is how you get into the gardens now until such times as they can get the pedestrian bridge repaired. So basically I've got over the, the road bridge. So <clears throat> that's the pedestrian bridge. Uh, yeah, it was damaged last October, November uh, when this area had a whole month's worth of rain falling 24 hours. So the actual damage was done by a number of boats and static caravans crashing into it. So hopefully it'll get repaired soon. But it looks an expensive fix. So this is what I call Sequoia Boulevard. It's uh, a little avenue uh, with Sequoia trees on either side. Uh, it's not looking its best at the moment. Um, there was a lot of damage done by compaction of the soil so over the last year they've effectively been first of all fortifying the roots of all the trees uh, and now they're, they're changing the ground so it's more aerated um, so the trees will survive but uh, at some point this will all be grassed over again once they're satisfied that the work they've done to the ground is okay if I remember what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a photograph after this clip showing what this looks like with grass. Yeah, I thought, I thought today would be quite a safe day to make this blog thinking the school holidays were over. Uh, so the, the gardens would be nice and quiet. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know if the, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, a lot of families here are very busy and it always kind of puts me off a little bit doing a monologue when there's lots of people about the place but uh, we'll see what we can do it's lovely to see after coming here almost every week during the winter 
It's really nice to see all the green starting to come out. Maybe I should have made this blog in about a month's time. Uh, it would be a lot more colourful. Um, but the colour's just starting to come out and you'll have to just use your imagination. But this is rhododendron season, I'm, so I'm told. So at least, if you can see there, at least you're getting lots of colour from the rhododendrons. Uh, so if I did this vlog later on, there'd be less of that, but more green. So, this is Benmore House. Uh, I believe there's there been a couple of houses here in various states over the years, I believe. Um, I think it was a guy called John Lamont actually built the current incarnation. But probably one of the most uh, famous owners of it was James Duncan. James was the guy that effectively developed Pucks Glen as well. So, then after that it was an American guy bought it and I think he's the one that planted all the sequoia trees in Benmore Gardens. But yeah. It's now used as a outdoor recreational centre for kids. So, hence all the minibuses there. So usually there's uh, lots of groups of kids out doing interesting stuff like visit the buildings and walking in the streams and stuff like this. But uh, yeah, Benmore House. Just after uh, Benmore House, we're going to go left here uh, and carry on this path for, for a fair wee bit. And this is the, the quiet zone of the park. There's a couple of wee tracks just go through here where, you know, people can come here for a bit of contemplation. Um, as you can see, it's sealed off there because again after the storms at the weekend Storm Kathleen I think it was I don't know those two storms one after another the storm I think it was Storm Kathleen so I've, basically there's some branches hung up there so they're very very good from a safety point of view in this park you know after a storm they'll go out and they'll close off any tracks that need a bit of work um, so there's no chance of you getting a big branch landing on your head Okay, back to the main track. Just off to the left of the track, uh, there's a wee diversion uh, that will take you to these golden gates. Um, I won't, I won't rattle on about the history of them. But you could, you could probably do a wee pause and read that for yourself. Uh, this bit of the the track actually runs alongside the road. That's the the river Masan River, River Masan, and it all runs alongside this track here, which takes you up to Glen Masan. Um, some beautiful big waterfalls further up the river. Um, again, I've uh, photographed them many times. But lovely big cascades, especially when the, wet, the, water, the water level is high. But anywho, onwards. Uh, and this is when you'll get your first glimpse of the fernery up there. So the first vid building that we're going to visit is the Bhutanese Pavilion. I um, don't know if you can see it, but just up there through the trees, that's where it is. There are two ways to get to it. It's probably the hardest to find of the three buildings, because uh, there's no through track as such. There are, there's a track up, which is marked by this pillar here, uh, and there's a track out, or track down, uh, which is up the top track, but it's also marked by a pillar like that. So depending whether you're coming from the bottom or the top just keep an eye out for that pillar the last two times I've come up this track uh, both times I've seen two deer up there uh, don't think that's going to happen today I think the park's too busy and the gardens are too busy but yeah it was, it's always a nice surprise when you come around a corner and find some deer although uh, I don't think this is, they try very hard to keep the deer out because they can do a fair bit of damage uh, to the young trees and bushes but no deer this time what I can never understand in these gardens though is that uh, 
how loud people shout at each other even though they're like about two feet apart you can hear them from thousands of yards away you know and you think oh they must just be around the corner they're so loud then about 15 minutes later you finally see them I don't understand it you would have thought a place like this would have inspired a sense of uh, calm and peacefulness that effectively shouting at your your friend that's two feet away would be the last thing in your mind but uh, there we go going to a pavilion and the beautiful view from it judging by the noise I think there's a, a group coming up so I won't have it to myself very long yeah I can hear them all the way up here <laughs> but hey ho Right, we'll go to the next one then, because like I say, it's just going to get noisier from here on in. But, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful building. Right, we're on our way to the next building, which is the Chilean Viewpoint Refuge. This is the, the track we come up. It's like I said before, this is the only track that goes down to that building, which makes it the the hardest to find out the three but we'll go up this way now so you know you're on the right track when you pass another one of these pillars normally there's uh, all sorts of flags tied up to it and I, ca I can only presume that they too have been victims of the last couple of storms but yeah I always stop here get my breath back but also appreciate the view it's beautiful and this is the other end of the track, just here, which takes us up onto the main track, which is there. Uh, judging by the banging noises from that family that come up behind me, it sounds like the, the parents are letting the kid bang his stick off, or pretty much anything that he can bang his stick off. So I hope it's a light stick and he's not doing any damage. But yeah. Okay, uh, there's a couple of ways to get to the refuge. There's that way, and then a hard right. But we're going to go this way because you lose a fair bit of height there before going back up again. Uh, and anyone that watches my videos knows how much I hate losing height. So we're going to go this way. So that last track I was on I actually got to uh, a split uh, and I went right. I didn't film it, but I went right. And that takes us on to this main track here. Um, if you carry straight on up there, you'll eventually get to a gate. Uh, if you go through that gate, the Wright Memorial is up in the hill on the other side of the track. Uh, that's a, yet another of the many, many, many trails that go through the gardens. But to see the, the viewpoint refuge, we're going to go right here. And here we are. Uh, there's nobody in it. So that's two out of two so far I've got to myself. Well, the last one doesn't really count because I had that family hot in my heels. But I really, really expected someone to be up here because this is the most popular spot for people to visit. Um, and it's also the easiest to get to because there's a number, a couple of tracks that converge on it. Uh, but yeah, what a stunning looking building. Eh? And again, rather than me wittering on about the history of it, I'll uh, just do a quick shot of this, of the board, and again, you can snapshot it if you want. Okay. View. I don't know how much of you can see because of the, the contrast. The sky is so bright, but uh, yeah, look at that. Um, I can't remember the name of that glen that goes up there. Like I said, that's Glen Massan. That glen there is, uh, oh, I cannot remember the name of it. But 
but uh, yeah. And there we go. Chilean refuge, shelter. To go to the next one, the third of our points of interest uh, in the gardens, Benmore Gardens. You take this track down here and you can, you can see the steepness of it and this is why I didn't want to come up this way. <laughs> Lose all the height to then basically have to come up here. But uh, I'll show you the, ne the next couple of turn-offs. The third building we're going to, when you, when you come to the main track, we're going to go right. And it's called basically the Chilean Shelter. Um, also known as the, the Condor. Uh, you'll be, oops, excuse me, just dropped my glasses. <laughs> yeah, you'll see why it's called the Condor when we get there. And I've just remembered the name of that glen as well. Well, I think it's the name of the glen. The river that runs through it is the Karasik, or Kurasik, Karasik. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but the Karasik River. Uh, so I presume it's the Karasik Glen. Um, okay, it comes to a dead end eventually. But if you go over the top of the hill, it'll take you down to uh, Loch Tarson, I believe, on the other side uh, of, the, of the hill. But we've gone down this way. Right, there are three ways of getting to this last building, the Condor. Uh, I'm going to take the easiest one, which is the first one. Uh, further down the track, there's another entrance. And effectively, that is like a horseshoe, eventually joining up with this. But in the middle of that track, there's, a, there's an exit from the track that goes down the hill and then back down to, to ground level down to uh, beside the road at uh, Glen Massan. Okay, so effectively there's three ways of getting to this building. Normally, once I've visited the building, I would then go down the hill, down to uh, lower levels. Um, but because I want to show you the fernery, I'm going to take a hit <laughs> and come up at the track that's up there and then back up this hill. And that's your first view of it, just through the trees there. And again, beautiful view over the glens. Uh, and that's the Boutonese Pavilion, yeah. the first building that we went to. I, I always get confused because I find the names of the three buildings are similar enough. I always get confused between the three, but that's certainly the first building we went to way over there. So that's the track that takes you downhill uh, and then back to the main road down the bottom. But we want to go right. And there we go. Oh, three for three. Nobody here either. This is fantastic. So you can see now why it's called the butterfly or the condor. The shape of the roof. This is a brilliant... If you're feeling a bit stressed... Oops. This is a fantastic place to just sit and contemplate. Because you've got this lovely stream just running through uh, underneath what well, I think that's bamboo to be honest I think that stream's pretty uh, moderate considering how much rain we've had over the last week but that's one thing about these hills they usually drain really quickly but, uh, yeah get yourself down here have a wee seat and just think of nothing for 10 minutes and I guarantee you'll come away a little bit more relaxed. Okay, we, I think I've got enough time to catch the fernery before it closes, I think. So to do that, unfortunately we're not going to go down the easy way, which is down the hill. We're going to have to go back up here again, gain some height again. But again, ah, it's worth it just for the views though, isn't it? You know, it's worth saying, massive shout out to the people that maintain these grounds. After last uh, October, November storms, there was so much damage done to the area. And there still is. 
it's going to be years before all the damage is repaired. But the, the lads and lassies that work this place, I mean I was here shortly after the storm and I saw how much damage was done to the tracks. But with a no virtually it's felt like no time at all. They were in there repairing, building the tracks up again, putting in new drainage pipes and culverts. And now, to be honest, you would just never know there'd been any damage done. It's amazing how much work they get done in such a short period of time. So well done. I definitely appreciate it, I'm sure others do as well. So that's the track we come down from the refuge building. <laughs> Actually, I took you all the way down there to take you to the Condor. But this track here, almost directly opposite, that track there will also take you down to the Condor as well. But, oh, never mind. It's all good exercise, isn't it, at the end of the day? So again, if you're into your having a wee 10 minute, 10 minute sit to relax, can you think of a better place than that? Just sit there, look at that view. That's west, so if you're here comes sundown, sometimes you get some beautiful colours over the top of the hill. The other good thing about this is, this is the highest point left in my walk. Obviously that's the highest point we went to, but it's all downhill from here in a good way. But yeah, that's another wee place, come here. Have yourself a seat and look at the view you'd get. Look at that view. Right, after the bench, we're going to go right here. Again, if you go left, that'll take you up to the refuge. Uh, but we're going right and in fact you, you can actually see the pillar here which will take you down to the uh, pavilion the first building that we went to so like I say if you decide to do some of the other buildings first you can uh, you can come along here and then go down that track there So, to get to the fernery, you want to take this track here. I mean, you can see there, it's, it's clearly marked on the signs as well. There's loads of these little signs all over. Some of them are just small ones like that. Others are uh, full-on maps of the, the gardens with the usual, you are here, wee pointy sticker on it. But uh, wherever there's like a, a place where you can cut off to get to the a building of interest, you'll quite often see one of these little ones as well. The path will eventually take you down to here. Now, if you go left, that will take you down towards Benmore House again. Uh, here you can get a beautiful view of the Holy Loch over there. Uh, and beyond that, uh, the River Clyde. But we want to go down this track here. Yeah, there we go, your first view of the, the top of the fernery. I uh, had a wee quick look in Wikipedia. So uh, it was actually, the original building was built in Victorian times by that guy James Duncan again, the one that did Pucks Glen. Um, but it fell to bits uh, and then I think they managed to raise some money to get it restored, I think in 2009. So not that long ago. Uh, and again, what a brilliant job they made of it. One thing for your kids to look out for, you get these little sculptures kind of hidden away in the gardens. There's that one there. I think there's, there's, there's one further up where this track begins. I'm sure there's more, but uh, I'm not the most observant of people. <laughs>
and here we go inside Puxman. No more the log on the outside, too many people. This actually reminds me of the Botanic Gardens in Glasgow, except on a much, much smaller scale. Alright mate, sounded like somebody was doing work. Ah, what a good job they made of restoring it. Eh? I would say this is probably another place you could sit, come and sit for 10 minutes and relax but uh, I think it's probably too popular I think there'll just be a non-stop non stream of people coming in but uh, look at the greens, this place is beautiful you feel as if you want to whisper when you're in here set of stairs and then out and we'll wander down to, to Puck's Hut next I think okay that's us back in the main track beside the Glen Massan Road um, yeah I think it must be four o'clock with the fernery shots because I think that guy was, was locking up the back gate uh, I thought it was half four, maybe it's four but uh, I'm glad we managed to get in there before it, it shut uh, to be honest most of the times I come walking in these gardens it's shut by the time I get there because I'm such a late starter uh, right so we're going to be heading back we'll go by back Benmore house again um, and we'll go to Puck's hut It's quieting down quite a bit now. It's just it's just, just about four o'clock. I think uh, if you just want to come here and it's nice and quiet and you want the peace and quiet uh, and to relax, I think this is about the time. Either come during the winter or around about four o'clock. Uh, any of the bus tours are usually gone by then. Uh, everybody heads home for their dinner. So four o'clock is a good quiet time to come it's just so beautiful here anyway right onwards to Puck's hut so Benmore house again but coming from the other direction I'm taken by the fact I haven't seen any uh, groups of kids running about in orange I must be wrong I'm taking that to mean that uh, Easter must be a two-week holiday rather than a one-week holiday and that's why there's no kids here they're all away in their holidays but uh, it's some building it really is if I remember uh, I'll uh, put a photograph in after this clip of a lovely shot I took of it at night uh, it was during Covid times it was just after lockdown but the place itself was shut so it wasn't being used at that time so I came down here one night and took a lovely night shot of it. Towards the northern edge of the gardens is this lovely old building here as well. Um, I think it used to be the stables uh, when this used to be a country house. I think that used, that used to be the stables building, but I could be wrong. Uh, uh, there's some public toilets here as well if anybody's caught a bit short uh, and again I did a lovely night shot of that building uh, a couple of years ago I'll see if I can dig it out and put it in the video as well but uh, I don't know if it's still going, but 
On the left there, there used to be a, a gallery. I don't think it's been open for a while, but the, the sign's still up. But whenever I've passed, the gate's always been closed. So maybe somebody can put a comment in the video and say what the score is. But if that gallery is ever going to reopen. But we are going up this way. Another thing I'm noticing as well is there are so many tracks here, so many. And yet I've seen so many families just running across the, the, the grass and between the trees and through the flower beds. You know, taking shortcuts between the tracks. I was like, why? You know, these lovely tracks are laid on for you. Just, just stick to the tracks. Stop running about doing damage on the grass and the flower beds. Anyway, I promise that'll be my last moan of the day. But this here is Puck's Hut. Uh, again, I did another night shot of this. It's one of my favourite, one of my favourite shots actually. If I remember, again, I'll put it after this clip. But it's called Puck's Hut. Well, apart from the fact there's a little figure of Puck up the top, this was originally uh, the, the a hut uh, at the top of Puck's Glen, where the stairs are. In one of my videos, I pointed out there was a, a hexagonal uh, flag stone base. Uh, there now is just a bench where you can sit and have a rest. But in those days, in Victorian days, this is the hut that used to be up there. Uh, again, James Duncan, I think, put it up there. So there it is. I think that's, that's it in situ uh, when it was in Pucks Glen. Okay. But uh, again, this is another building that you probably want to get to quite quickly because I think we shut it or, or lock it up about half past four but uh, it's a good place to sit if it was chucking it down the rain because the, the rain in that roof would be very soothing right um, oh yeah it's a bit of a mess out there at the moment there used to be some trees down there and they all come down in the wind as well so they've all been cut up and taken away um, so we're going to go to the pond now, so we're going to go to the right. And here is the pond. Okay, beautiful wee red bridge that uh, I photographed before. Come about autumn. That over there is just a riot of colour. It is loads of different types of trees, all different colours in the autumn. It is really stunningly beautiful. So you can go round the pond round here. And you can see the wee statue here. This uh, used to be a fountain. But uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but it stopped being a fountain around about lockdown. Um, and it's never been back on since. So I don't know if maybe, maybe they had to switch it off for lockdown and uh, it all sludged up and now, now they can't put it back on again. Or maybe it's just too expensive. But if you go over the red bridge there, you know, you can, you can stand here and... Again, you're kind of surrounded by leaves. Come the summer, that's all just leaves, so you're, it's a nice secluded feel. But, uh, okay. I think that's it. I don't think there's any more to show you. Thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next one.